Hey guys, my name is Jeremy. You normally deal with Lance on Love to Hate, and we are creating this new kind of sub channel or, or streaming of hate the, well, not hate the game, it's uh, hard to master. So yeah. today we're gonna be, yeah, not hate the game. We love games. I mean, you go look at Lance's shelf, he's allowed to have way more games than I am. Uh, but another note. But so right here, we're gonna talk a little bit about strategies, tips, maybe some replayability uh, factors, and then just what we overall thought or how our first kind of game went with this. Uh, we could definitely see where iconography and things can definitely make this a hard game to master. And if you don't pay attention to everything, it's gonna be that for you. But I felt like after our first game, 15 minutes in, I didn't even get to finish the video or anything about how to play it. I just had to jump in with y'all in about 15 minutes. The majority of the iconography made sense and so. Right. Yeah, definitely for how heavy of a game this is and how busy the board is with all the different actions you can do, it is surprisingly pretty quick to wrap your head around. It takes maybe three turns through and you really kind of feel like you have a good understanding of almost everything there is in this game. Now I say that, that but this game is hard to master for sure because uh, even after a full playthrough through it, you're going to be thinking back on several of the mistakes you made. It, in my case, uh, is definitely that way. I, I made several mistakes too from the gate that, I mean, I was needing an extra bread here or parchment just to finalize everything. For Lance, it was just a little bit more sour because he lost by that one point, one which point. drives him nuts between us. <laughs> it's my favorite ending to a game. Um, I could care who who else wins or loses, but as far as between Lance and I, that one point victory really solidifies this uh, hate to, I mean, hard to master <laughs> gameplay here, so. <laughs> Now, uh, this game is one that is going to require planning ahead, and it's going to require uh, extra forethought and not only just knowing the action that you wanna do, but also having that extra decision of, do I put this, uh, do, do I take this f uh, pure die or do I take this tainted die? And having to balance out that scale, it's almost a game within the game. Uh, it is a really cool mechanic that goes into determining player order, uh, which can also determine getting points later on in the game. Uh, and when you're thinking about, uh, you know, uh, this is dice placement, and, and essentially it's kind of like a worker placement idea, but player turn order is so, so important when it comes to that, and you gotta have good strategy when uh, playing a game like this. So uh, let's get into a little bit of a uh, talk on strategy real quick, Jeremy. Uh, talk about some of the thoughts and ideas that you had going into this game. Going into it, I just knew it was on my shelf for shame for three months <laughs> and I wanted to get to the table. Uh, COVID, I, COVID survivor as of now anyways, um, wasn't able to game as much. And so it sat on the shelf, wanted to get it. David Turksey, one of, one of my favorite designers. I mean, anything Mind Clash, I, I just insta back because um, it's Mind Clash and David Turksey. I mean, he's amazing at designing games. And so just getting the game to the table, uh, having played Teo to Walk In, and we just played Tawantan Sue You about a month, a month and a half, two months ago. And so this was another one that at first I was a little hesitant. Um, being that it is dice selection, uh, you know, doing the actions, which isn't anything wrong with it. But as I watched uh, a video early on and the Egyptian theme really grew on me, you know, anticipating that, that new onk, come on, game to come. So I was like, this can fill that niche and get it going. I will say real quick, uh, he did just talk about balancing those scales and pulling a die and the importance of that. I will tell you, I felt like being first player the majority of the game was necessary. Um, getting the die that you need is very important. Um, for me, I think I was first player all but maybe one or two times where I just went he super heavy because I had to do my actions, which is under anybody in worker placement knows. Uh, occasionally you will have to take that big turn and suffer it, whether it's, um, Shoot, I can't even think of the games that, that, that it would really affect as, as much as this, but I felt like this was one 
that was very important for me to go first, uh, more than like uh, underwater cities or something. I find this was much more important because of, um, and it, it had a lot to do with the, the Destiny card for mm -hmm. me. I mean, I had this one the majority because nobody wanted it. I mean, I was the last to pick a couple times. I'd always get this card, which is good because it breaks that tie. But when you're thinking, oh man, I definitely need to do this or that, and I've got to get that die first, and Lance or Jeremiah or Eric, one of them is going first, you know, has the opportunity to go first. I, you're going to look at other people's scales, and you're going to say, I've got to, I've got to match it. I cannot, you know, if one person's heavy, you know it, that's fine. But if two or three people, and you're trying to tie them, and you know you have this card, or you have there's a technology card that gives you five honk and two faith to help you balance. What a great technology card. Right. Um, and you hated that card because I it, did. because that, I mean, there's losing no by one point, there's so many things that <laughs> went against you yeah. to cause that. I mean, that's one of them. There's, there's no way you can overcome that card. Uh, you, you get that card, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed. Well, I wonder if there's two of them. I haven't checked the deck, but I, mm -hmm. but I know like this card here on the blessings, is there's dual cards, just right. like there's dual buildings. Let me see if there's two, but well, that was a pretty, there's one of them. While you're looking for that, I, I do want to say that- No, there's uh, just one. That's, so if you that's get a that very card, powerful card. If you get this card, pick it up. You're I, probably going to be first. I will again. say that uh, the technology cards in this game are very important. Uh, it, it's a good strategy to play. Uh, what god is this right here? The uh, uh, the Thoth. Thoth, yeah, the Thoth God action, which is where you're getting those cards. You'll definitely want to do that a number of times throughout the course of the game because the technology cards can really push you over the top. I had one that allowed me <laughs> from to the take, beginning yeah, of the from game, the beginning not of the even game, fair. That allowed me to take the forbidden dice, and I could put them either on the pure or the uh, tainted side. So essentially that's kind of like taking an Anubis action. I don't get to change the value and I do still have to put it on my scale, but I do get to pick pure or uh, tainted and I was pretty much close to balanced every round being able to do that. I was taking dice that no one had access to. So that was a very powerful card, but that's just one example of a number of cards mm. that are very powerful in this game and so if you want to do well you almost have to come down here and get a number of cards that are going to allow you to get actions that nobody else has the ability to, to do um i really feel like that's a strong strategy i felt for me i felt like that was good through half to two-thirds of the game and i'll tell you uh, one thing we didn't talk about in the rules video is on your decree ca decree cards, you're going to get two to start and you're going to choose one and put the other one back. But uh, later you can get more. And this is how it actually was set up whenever I was playing with you guys was when, we, when the decree cards came out, when I moved up on my happiness and popularity, they were all birds. Well, I had these two cards available. This one is a bird and it allows you to have uh, two points per statue and then two points per any building around the temple. And so that was a burden. I was, you know, so that kind of your decrees are going to give you a little bit of a push in a direction you want to go. One of our friends, Eric, his, he didn't even look at it once. It's kind of like scythe for him. The objection <laughs> card was nothing, objective card was nothing for him. He had the least amount of popularity or happiness the whole game and his was based on this track. Whereas mine again was the buildings and statues. I didn't do statues as much. Because like any other game, you have to choose. Yes, I like to dabble in a little bit of each, but there's going to be one or two things that you have to do. Yeah. And getting, I was the only one to get a second decree card, and I think this helped a lot. Because my second one, which worked really well with what you said about getting technology cards, was you get three points per technology card. Right. I got this card randomly off the top of the deck um, by doing a temple action right here and getting a decree card because it because I waited for that dart uh, to come around, got this card and I knew three, I was getting nine points and I was trying to get one more and I was very, like, like I'm talking about at the very end, your last two turns of this game are gonna be so tight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was, I was short bread, didn't realize how short of bread I was until that last turn. I thought yeah. I had enough parchment to do what I needed to do to get that bonus action. 
realized that what I was looking at was one gold and no parchment over there because I had just spent it to move up to the 20 spot. Um, and so the cards can be very important. You can get points off cards, you can get resources. I felt like cards though, after a point in the game, no, there were a there was no dice over here, and b nobody was really taking them. That is true. They yeah, were you, taking you, them for resources. You, you're at the mercy of what other players do and where the dice are available to you. So you can't always go into this with the same mindset every time mm -hmm. you play. Uh, one other strategy that I implied uh, that I used in my uh, game is that I went heavy into statues. I had a decree card mm -hmm. that gave me bonus points for each statue that I had in the course of the game, and you do get those in-game points for however many statues you've built. So statues can give you lots of points, especially, and I wanna take the overhead view here for this, especially if mm -hmm. you claim these two spots right here on the production side of this, what is this, the uh, Os Osiris God. Because again, the statue right here at the top gives you the tiebreaker for each of these columns because you're the highest up. And so uh, if I just had one more building, I was the pink player. If I had one more building right here in this column, I would have claimed this column along with these two columns. And won the game. And that would have won me the game because I would get three, six, nine points instead of just six. And so it's things like that, that these statues right here, not only do that, but they also give you gold pieces uh, when you claim them. But uh, this is a very powerful way to get points during the scoring mm -hmm. rounds. Uh, you could get, if no one's coming over here to put buildings, you can get as much as 12 points each time you score. I think you did the first time. I think you got nine points the first time, and the second time you got six points. You got 15 points from there. Right. Okay, I'm here. I will tell you, as far as what Lance had and being able to take any die, it was really good for him to go here early. Uh, I could not get any granite to do that action, and later, like we said, you forget rules or misplace things. I wasn't really focused on my board much. I was more focused on, I like to focus at like Queen's Gambit. I'm watching everybody else's moves, planning my moves, you know, two, three turns <laughs> out trying to, so I can maximize everything. And generally it goes pretty well, but the, I've mis, misfocus on the granite, got the first one out finally over here, which this was just from uh, our rules, you know, overview, but, the next one, I, I kept thinking I needed four and I had three sitting there and I didn't even think about it until the end. So I was spending it on the pillars because I needed less because I had forgotten that it, it's different based on what statue you are. So little things like that, there's a, there is a lot going on. Uh, I do believe that the iconography is once you get going and if you're used to seeing iconography like this on heavier games, it's not gonna be that difficult. It's just you might forget little things. Like that's the only rule that I really mis misplayed. Mm -hmm. um, now forgetting parchment or bread, those are things that I just had a little slip of the brain while I was planning things. Right. But the that's one thing you just want to know is what are your requirements, and they could be different on your board than what's required on here. Because I kept well, I would look at this space and it says minus this. And for some reason, I just was seeing that as a four instead yeah. of a minus and a, a question mark, which I should have known that. But in the heat of the moment, I was more focused on what die do I need? Lance is doing this over here. He's got a pretty good capital as long as I can get one row. Jeremiah's doing a lot of statues like Lance. You know, no one's doing the happiness track. I should just tackle that. That'll get me, you know, 12 to 15 points at the end. I mean, it's... You, you want to spread out, but you do need to focus on a couple things like over here and over here. And I didn't have this one here. Yeah, so there's lots of different ways to get points in this game. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it can feel overwhelming, especially for non-gamers. And that's one reason why we would say don't play this with non-gamers. Uh, but Not until you convert them to be a <laughs> very hard to master game. If that is something you people. can do. I'm um, not quite sure on that, but uh, I've let, done it a couple times. let's talk a little bit about our thoughts on what we liked about this game and, and if this is one that uh, is ultimately going to stick around in your collection or not. Uh, I will tell you guys that this is a game that I absolutely loved. And uh, I know I, I talk a lot about the games in our videos with positive uh, mindset that I, you know, I, I say a lot of positive things about a lot of games. 
but this one was it knocked it out of the park for me Lance, um, is this in your top three? Because every time I talk <laughs> to you, you go, "This is that's in my new top three. So I do want to say this. <laughs> I do want to try this out again because I do think uh, the setup can determine a lot. Mm -hmm. The cards you get at the beginning of the game can determine how well you do, I feel. And, and it can give you a, a more clear-cut strategy to follow than some other other cards. So I do mm -hmm. want to try this out again and not get such great cards that I had at the beginning of the game. Yeah, because you kept saying, I don't think I would have done as good I if don't I didn't think have I that first card. Yeah. Um, but I thought, man, I honestly, I, I say this every now and then in games, but I really thought that you and Jeremiah, because y'all were ahead of me here, Eric was even up there, but I really thought y'all were running away with it, and if it weren't for having the extra degree card yeah. and and knowing I was going to get this and then boosting this at the end, y'all would have y'all would have just mopped the floor with me. So but. I do think, again, coming back to the cards, I do think the cards are super important, super powerful in this game. Uh, but they are. I mean, they're god cards. They they are god cards. Yeah. Um, now I, I will say that uh, there can be some restraints that you feel in this game when you're playing it because you uh, you may have this strategy, uh, say such as statues, but it, you know depending on which mm -hmm. uh, direction the obelisk is facing and the actions other people have done, there may no may not be any dice in that region, and it can stay that way for a few turns. A couple, yeah, a couple. And, and you just you you, you got to you know throw that strategy out the window and say you know what that's not working for me, and I might come back to it again later on. But right now I can't do that. It's mm -hmm. not going to get me anything. So you do have to abandon strategy and go mm -hmm. with something else. And so you, you got to diversify in this I, game. I would agree with that because like I said, I started out over here, but knowing that I needed to build over here. But then these, I mean, once it gets cleared out, you're, you know, two, two turns for you can even go back there. And, yeah. and if so, if you're not first player, they could take the one or two die that you really need. Right. And everything else is forbidden and only Lance can grab it. And then you're, <laughs> you can't do that action. And, and that'll happen to you. And you've, this is definitely a game that you have to adapt. But I think any good, heavy, I mean, uh, I said to want and sue you earlier. I mean, you're looking at the board and you've you got to know where to place and, yeah. and, and pull them off and stuff. And so if you're, there's times where people take your spot and you just have to to move. And in this place, it may not be take your spot. It may be take your die and you've got to adjust. I'll tell you, if you want early scoring, you're going to look at these two regions pretty much. Mm -hmm. If you want in-game scoring, you're going to look at these two regions. Right. And, and I mean, and these will give you in-game uh, points, but you're getting, I mean, Eric would have eight point after eight point by doing yeah. these double spots. So this region and this is going to score twice. If you want early points, you're going to put a lot of focus here. If you want something that like the cards, I mean, I could have got another decree card if they weren't birds and I didn't want to waste my parchment to wipe it, which I could. You can't have double of the same one, so you have to pick and choose, but... Um, this is definitely in game. This is in game, and Lance will tell you. I always tell him it's about the in game, and if you don't and, and plan in, I mean, mm -hmm. this is. If I would have done one more wrong move, Lance is a victor, and I don't get to you know joke right. with him about this one point losing by one point. This one yeah. way it kills him, but it's <laughs> it's those minute decisions and mistakes that you make that really change the game. I couldn't pay all my bread at the end, mm -hmm. and I thought. I was going to be able to do this, but I was at one parchment short. All right. It gets super tight, not only with the die that you're trying to pull, but the resources to do the action. And you could be stockpiled up on something. You could have this card uh, on here that says you don't have to pay your bread. That's great. But if you don't have that, you've got to pay that. You've got to find a way to get that. And if you spin them up here like I did and didn't plan and thought you had more bread than you really did because you thought one was a five or something... Well, shoot, when you go to pay your bread, you're going to be struggling and losing a lot yeah. of points. And you just have to balance that. That's what I had to do was, right. I at the last turn, you saw me thinking, I had to balance, well, I can get three points here, two points off my card for being the uh, top person. That's going to negate the six points for no bread. I think that's a wash. You know, what can I do to just maintain another one or two points and, and hope for the best? And I think at times in this game, you have to just, do that, cross your fingers, and and make a pretty good decision. Um, 
and hope that you have it there for the last right. turn. And you were, what, third last on the last round? Yep, yep. So, I mean, at that point, if you're not first in the last two rounds, I mean, it gets tough out here. I, I couldn't even really do anything. I just had to produce ore that I didn't need just to balance my scale to try and do this. I mean, that was a waste of a turn. <laughs> but in the end, it, it balanced the scale. It won you the work. game. Well, it just balanced the scale. But that won you the game because you got those, and those I almost, three points. And I the almost end. couldn't even do it, though, because I had that one scribe to lower the die mm -hmm. because I couldn't take it. I tried to take a gray. I couldn't take a gray because <laughs> I had one less, and you can't take it to produce, and you can't take it if you can't do the action. So luckily there was a, a black five that I could reduce to a three also, which this was a three technically when we played, but I could lower that three, put it on the board balance. Mm -hmm. And really, I'll, really you can play defense and just try not to lose points to, yeah, cause you're gonna lose, you start out at 10 points, you can lose points from right. the get go, so. Yeah, if, if you're a person out there that really enjoys having to kind of think about little details and making sure, you know, I've, I've got to have three bread and two parchment and, you know, just kind of carefully planning. Resource each, management. Yeah, resource management. You're going to love this game. It has it in spades. And so uh, I think the hardest part of scoring is up here, though. When you're playing it out and you're looking and you're trying to score, mm -hmm. I think this is the hardest part of the game um, when you think about it. And it's just because you're scoring a bunch right here throughout the game. Everything else is not a big deal and not that difficult because you're scoring it like at a at a uh, uh, hourglass symbol, which is twice, once or twice, uh, depending on which color. But this is scored immediately. And when you're placing buildings and match it up, this is where you're having to think a lot for points. Right. Other stuff is just planning. Um, I mm -hmm. will say replayability, you can put these tokens to mix up the, um, the Horus actions over there to give different uh, benefits. And you do have to pull the die that you want. There was one right. I was trying to build a statue and I couldn't, oh, I could have, but it wouldn't have been where I wanted it to go. Uh, because I, I didn't have the right die value. So, um, but that helps replayability, the cards. The you cards, won't see yeah. all the cards every time. You'll, I mean, unless people are just card heavy and all the die are going over there, but I don't think that's gonna happen. You'll go through and about half the cards. And your, then your, your pillars. Temples, yeah, your, your, your pillars, yeah. Your pillars uh -huh. are gonna be different every time you play too. So I would say there's high replayability in this game. And uh, so I had a, so I'll just say this, because I was talking to a friend of mine, Robert, and watch this video and like it and subscribe for us. <laughs> but Robert was asking me about the game. He goes, tell me how it is. It's hard to find unless people want all the money for it. So tell me what you think. And he goes, how is it compared to Teotihuacan? And I, I think that I like this better than Teotihuacan. And the reason is, is because the in-game points are like 70 points. Teotihuacan, you can have huge and jumps of points. Yeah. And I'm not talking just at the, I'm fine with at the end, but it reminds me of Tapestry. And I like Tapestry just for the, uh, it's not my favorite game, but I do like Tapestry for what it is and how the game plays. But the scoring is just, it's point salads on steroids. Points. Because you can get, yeah, you can get a, an a, overabundance of points in multiple rounds. And that's the same way I feel with Teo to walk in. And yeah. you can get a huge where it's not as tight. I like a tighter game. Um, it doesn't, ha I don't mind, you know, having a hundred and 150 points, but I like when it is a little bit tighter and you maybe have that last minute jump at the end because right. you planned it versus just, well, I know every round there's going to be a big scoring for everybody to go through. There's, there's definitely more be tension and more stress mm -hmm. with each decision you make because it is such a tight game. Mm -hmm. And I would agree with you there that I think this is uh, more rewarding whenever you do get those points and, and you know you 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 had a plan that kind of that actually worked. Uh, you feel rewarded and you feel you feel smart <laughs> when you play this game. So if you're looking for kind of a game that feels like it's on the same level of complexity, I, I, when, we, when you talked about planning out moves, 
Uh, it popped into my head paladins. I think this is like paladins level. Okay, yeah. Uh, because paladins, you do have to plan out a bit. I mean, you get so many workers that you have to right. place. And you can gain more workers and more abilities as you go based on how you play them. And I felt like this complexity level, it's not the same game. I'm not saying it's comparable to it. I'm just saying as far as planning out moves and complexity, I feel like this is uh, a very close to that level. I if I had that. to choose, yeah, I could see that something. I mean, sure. it popped into my head when you were talking, when you were giving me your strategies of planning out and and how long and how much thought. I feel like, and there's gonna, there may be a time where somebody is just trying to probably me one time in the game where you're trying to plan out because it's so crucial. But I mean, it can be down to a one point win or loss or. Yeah, just screw up if you if you didn't plan that, and so it, you could get in a case if you have someone that's just overly AP. Yes, they're going to be staring at the board, not knowing yeah. what's going on. If you so, it's probably not something you want them to play until they get more familiarized. It, but I don't mind if someone's taking one turn to do a long turn. I understand that because it it can mean, and I don't have to win every game, but. I do like to maximize my potential in a game. I do like to plan it out and have the best score I can with what the resources and, and the game style sure. is. So I would say you may have a moment or two where even skilled gamers are gonna look at the board and go through each step in their head, like a Queen's Gambit uh, mode or whatever, <laughs> and plan out and see what other, you may have that. And it may take about five minutes, four or five minutes for them to do that. If you're okay with that, fine. If not, then you might not want them at the table. But I, like I said, I'm okay if somebody has that one time. If they're doing it every time, then yeah, we need to yeah speed it up. But you're probably going to have some, even skilled gamers are probably going to have a, a moment where they're taking a few minutes just to because they're at that point where it's the last two or three die that they're pulling and they right. have to make that very very important decision. Right. Yeah, so there is going to be a little bit of AP with this one. It is a longer game, and uh, you are going to want to make this game be the star of the night. This mm -hmm. isn't going to be the game that you start the night with. If you're having a lot of people over and and you know you're planning on being there for a long time, you'll you'll want to you know something the icebreaker at the beginning or you know a filler or whatever. This is the star of the night. This is what you end the night with. Uh, I'd say probably about two and a two and a half hours two, your first game. Two and a half hours for your first game for if, sure. If yeah. you've already been over the rules, right? If you have four people, if you have less people, right. I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd say drop off about half yeah. an hour or so. But sure. but yeah, first game going through you may like i said make a little mistake in your head or have to check each other on some stuff but i'd say about two and a half hours first game after setup after going over rules yeah. probably yeah um, does take a minute to set up so i, I usually i try to set up things before they uh, friends come over so it's ready to go because yeah uh if it's a new game it could take a while so just remember that all you uh hard to master people out there <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, hope this was uh, entertaining for you guys, gave you something to think about when it comes to this game, and I still don't know that I know how to pronounce it. Tekinyu? Tekinyu. I, mean, I, I believe. That's the way I've heard it said. Obelisk of the Sun. Um, so, upside down. Upside down. Here we go. Yeah, uh, so, yes, uh, Tekinyu, and um, I, I would recommend this game. Would you recommend this game? Oh yeah, like I've already told Robert it's a good game. Robert, say your name again. <laughs> uh, I'd say if if you like a game level of Paladins, that's you know if you like Egyptian themed games and and you want something yeah. that's going to be a little bit heavier, tight game. This this I mean it's only like forty bucks I think retail when it's in stock. When I mean it's going to be in stock again. <laughs> Board and Dice they do a pretty good job of restocking. Um, they're pretty hot right now on the games they've come out with, like Teo to Walk and um, Dice Settlers they did, which wasn't a super hot game, but that was decent to want and sue you. So, um, which I don't even know if you can say that one, but... I cannot. <laughs> Not even going to try. No. But yeah, David Turchez's <laughs> finest, I, I would say. I mean, I'm, I am going to keep it on the shelf. I do have to keep my collection a little bit more limited than Lance, but... I can definitely uh, keep it on my shelf. I'll find a spot for it. Uh, you may end up buying it from one day, but for now, it's staying on the shelf. It's It's got a little, little bit of room. So um, don't forget, uh, we do have the rules video. So if you want to see that or any other of Lance's 
uh, love to hate content, go ahead, ahead and hit that I. Bing! <laughs> And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, do make sure to hit that bell down below so that you'll be notified about new content. Or the next game that we think is maybe a little bit hard, hard to, to master. master.